What is up everybody? My name is Miguel aka The Liberal Thrifter and welcome to the debut episode of my new YouTube series. I'm really really excited for this. Thank you so much for giving my little video a chance. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is going to be all about eBay, reselling, thrifting, everything related to that. I'll be sharing all my tips, tricks, pickups. I really hope you enjoy it, whether you're a seasoned seller or somebody who's just starting out or anybody in between. I really hope that this helps you out. A little bit of background about me before we get started. I have been a part-time eBay reseller for seven years. That is part-time, not full-time, uh, because I am lucky enough to have a cushy work-from-home union desk job that with excellent benefits that is just way too good to think about giving up. So I just do this as my main hobby. So one of my favorite things to do is to go to a thrift stores like Goodwill, Salvation Army, Deseret, Little Independence, and pick up things to flip on eBay for a profit. Mainly I focus on t-shirts, shoes, CDs, eyeglasses, some hard goods, but really the majority of my knowledge is in men's clothing. So that's a lot of what I'll be sharing with you guys. Rather than tell you something kind of useless like my sign, I will tell you guys that I am a proud Ravenclaw, but JK Rowling can take a flying leap because this is definitely a no turf zone here. But as a Ravenclaw, I'm really into learning new things, knowledge for the sake of knowledge. And uh, knowledge is actually really important in the reselling game. The more niches you know, the more categories you're aware of, the better you're going to do at the whole reselling game. I myself am constantly learning new niches. I am constantly trying to study up to become a better reseller myself. I decided to make this series because uh, apparently I'm a commie, socialist, bleeding heart, liberal hipster who took this whole sharing thing a little bit too seriously growing up. And I just have this compulsive need to help people, to bring them up when I can, to share my knowledge, to share my experiences, to really help people out with what I have learned. I figure if I can help at least a couple of people to you know, put a tank of gas in their car or feed their kids or pay their light bill, then the time that I'm spending on this will be worth it. So anyway, enough of me rambling. Let's get to one of the reasons that you're probably here and that's to see some of my recent pickups. I'm still working on the ratios, but right now I'm thinking I'm gonna be doing about 15 pickups and 10 things that recently sold. The first item that I'm going to show you is this T Fury Steven Universe blue pullover sweater, size large, the T Fury logo if you're not familiar with it. Interesting story, T Fury is actually the first thing that I ever sold and that's because I knew it because I have a collection of about 80 to 100 t-shirts myself and a lot of them are nerd geek based. So I found the T Fury shirt when I was at a thrift store and I recognized it because I had the exact same one and I thought, hey, maybe this would be worth selling on eBay. And I looked it up and yes, indeed it was. I picked it up for $1.29 and I sold it for $25. And that is what sparked my interest in reselling. Uh, this is actually really cool because this, any Steven Universe fan would really, really get a kick out of all of this. It's kind of got the pixel art and it's got a lot of little references that will be recognizable to anybody who's really into the show. I love finding geek nerd stuff. This cost me about $6 and I'm pretty sure I can get somewhere in the $40 range. <clears throat> this next item is a Los Angeles Dodgers Frank Sinatra Knight t-shirt. Size small, so the size does hurt it a little bit, but this is actually a really rare t-shirt. It was only available for one night in 2010, I believe, if I remember correctly. And it was only available if you bought the VIP package. So this is really, really rare. I really dig finding shirts that have two fandoms kind of coming together. This will really be interesting to a Dodgers fan, but it will also really be extremely interesting to a Dodgers fan who is a, also a fan of Frank Sinatra. It just kind of makes it feel more personal. It makes it feel more unique. And somebody's going to really, really enjoy this. Paid $4 and I should be able to get probably in the 
40 to $50 range just because of its rarity. These next two items are a pair of jackets that are Affliction Black Premium label. Affliction actually sells pretty well, just regular, but Black Premium commands a premium. Uh, this is a thick quilted style jacket with lots of pockets, a lot of the embroidery, the embroidered spell out on the back, and the zipper actually has a very cool little detailed design like a skull and crossbone situation happening here I paid ten dollars should be able to get about a hundred dollars for this it's a little bit out of season but I'm willing to wait till it becomes in season and you know the old saying too and it's true found that right next to it this is another affliction black premium label jacket this one's more of a rain repellent uh, with kind of a glossy material and it's got the black on black insignias there it's got this really nice one there on the back as well and the zipper same thing again ten dollars each and should be able to get a hundred dollars each for them this next item is a pair of nike total 90 football cleats or as you americans like to call them soccer cleats this uh, soccer cleats are really, really high demand, have good resale value. All the information you need to look it up and get comps is right there. These particular ones I paid about $7 for and should be able to get somewhere in the $70 range. So definitely do not sleep on football soccer cleats. Now these do look a little bit more intricate. They have that side laces situation happening. But even some really nondescript, plain, normal looking ones are still going to be worth money. So I always check the numbers on every single pair that I find. This next item is a pair of Ray-Bans, black rectangular eyeglasses. There is the model number right there as well as the size. Ray-Bans are again really easy to find comps for. It's, this particular one is model... RB7017. Pick these up for about $3. Should be able to get about $35. Eyeglasses used to be really easy to find gems. It's not that common to find them in the wild anymore, unfortunately. A lot of them stores are putting them behind the glass cases. But if you find like a little independent or something small that hasn't cut onto that, maybe they'll have a basket, maybe they'll have like a hanger where they hang a bunch of them. Definitely look through those because you never know when you're going to find them slipping. Again, paid about $3, should be able to get about $35. This next item is one of the, my favorite brands to find. I'm here in Southern California, so I find these a little bit more often than you may. But this is a Disney Parks men's polo shirt, size XL. And this is for the Enchanted Tiki Room. Uh, when I saw this one, I was really excited because I've sold this exact same polo, just as a size small. And I remember getting about $40 for it. This bigger size definitely does help it go for more money. I, pay, I did pay up for this one. I paid about $10, but I should be able to get somewhere in the $60 range. Disney Park stuff, Disney World, Disney Resort. I definitely recommend you look everything up that you find from it. It's not all going to be worth money, but a lot of it will be. This next item is a pair of what I affectionately refer to as grandpa glasses. This is a brand called Seiko, like the watchmaker. These are full rim, silver, aviator style glasses. These are titanium and it's got all the information right there as well. These bigger glasses are really preferred by older people, older gentlemen, especially for these. And the big lens actually does have a practical use. If you can see there, this actually has bifocals in it. So a lot of older people need big lenses where they can put the bifocals on the bottom and still see out of the top here. And so they, it's kind of a, a practical use for these. Paid about $3 and I should be able to get about $35 for these. 
again, just because they're not your style or just because nobody modern or you know younger would be wearing these doesn't mean that these aren't worth money. So somebody stubborn, so an older person who doesn't want to change styles of glasses will come looking for whatever they have and that's where you can step in. In the same spirit as that, here is a pair of what I affectionately call grandma's glasses. These are same same situation. These are actually a brand called Tiffany Birth and they're the bigger lens so that can also easily fit bifocals, kind of the older style. These are vintage so it's got the old style look. Again, paid about three dollars for these as well and should be able to get close to the forty dollar range. This is more one of my bread and butter items. This is an Area Pro series. It's a western work style shirt, long sleeve. It's got some embroidery right there, the logo. And usually it's going to have the embroidered spell out on the back as well. This is a, a lot of people who have like horses or something like my brother does really like this brand. So definitely be on the lookout for area branded clothing. Another bread and butter piece is this Untuck It. That's the label right there. I think most resellers are familiar with Untuck It. Some people don't pick it up anymore because the margins aren't huge like they used to be but I still think that the margins are fine and they sell fairly quickly as long as they're in good condition. Paid $7 and I should be able to get somewhere in the $30 range, $25 to $30 range for this. This next item is a Uniqlo UT. See the label right there. And this is a character called Kagura from an anime called Jin Toma. Now, did I know this? No, but thanks to the magic of Google Lens, I was able to find an exact comp on these. Definitely, when, this is, when you see this label, use Google Lens, find exactly what it is, even if you know what it is. I once found a Star Wars shirt that I was like, okay, this is Darth Vader, cool. But I actually Google Lens it anyway, and it turns out that it's actually more prized because it was from a particular artist. So... This is actually kind of rare and also hyper specific. So somebody who really likes that particular anime, they may not get a lot of good merchandise that they can buy and wear. So they'll go looking for whatever they can get. I think uh, pay $4 and it should be able to get about $45 to $50 for just this plain black t-shirt. <clears throat> this next item is a vintage Jansport. Humboldt State University, home of the Lumberjacks sweater, brown pullover sweater, size small, made in the USA. I really like finding merchandise from a middle range school because, for example, the top line schools, they've already got their merchandise. I'm here in Southern California. You can go anywhere, Walmart, Target, and you'll find UCLA, USC stuff. Humboldt State University, you're not going to find that just anywhere. So somebody who went there, an alumni, somebody who's going there, who just got accepted and is going to be arriving soon, they're going to want this sweater. The fact that it's vintage is going to make it more attractive. You can't just get that anywhere. And I should be able to get, just paid $8, and I should be able to get about $40 for this. This next item is a Nike Dry Fit Kobe Bryant Black Mamba t-shirt. And Kobe Bryant, of course, passed away. Great basketball player. People like to rep his stuff. People like to wear his old shoes, his old shirts, and anything with his name and likeness on it will usually have some traction as far as reselling goes. A uh, quick tip on these Nike branded things. If you look on the inside label, you will usually find the model number here, this particular one is model 463366-00A, and that actually will give you usually an exact comp on eBay, and you will have all of the keywords that you need. This one will have the keywords Black Mamba, <clears throat> Kobe Bryant uh, 6, because apparently it says model 6 of his shoe, but definitely don't sleep on that kind of stuff. This particular one I paid $6. The Goodwill jacked up the price on this one because they knew someone would want it. 
but I should be able to get in the $35 to $40 range for this. <clears throat> and the final item that I'm going to show you uh, from my pickups is this pair of Silhouette Titan rimless eyeglasses. So as you can see, they have no frame around the lens. It's just the lens free floating there with these wire arms. And a lot of uh, kind of intellectual people like to wear this style. They just look really delicate. So I guess that, that appeals to them. This particular, I really like finding these, the Silhouette Titan, the Marcon Airlock. There's a, those are the two most common ones that are this style. I would definitely recommend picking up and looking these up when you find them. I paid $2 at a Deseret and I should be able to get somewhere in the $35 range. And that's it for the pickups for now. Let's get to some of the items that have recently sold from my eBay store. This one, let's see if we get it right, is a Disney Parks We're All Mad Here Alice in Wonderland Women's baseball style tee size 2xl again you can only get this at the park so that makes it something that's worth picking up paid four dollars and sold for 25 dollars this next item is a salt valley western large blue white plaid button front shirt size large and Western shirts were actually really hot for a little while. They still do okay, but this particular brand, Salt Valley Western, keep that in your memory banks. Those are so popular. I don't even have any in my store right now because I've sold them all. Anything I pick up usually will be selling within a week or two max. Picked up for $6 and sold for $25. This uh, Robert Graham bowler hat style shirt is uh, really stood out to me because I thought someone would really like the bowler pattern design. It also has these uh, nice rainbow rings across on the flip cuff. If you see that there, that's the flip cuff. And this sold for $40 and I paid $7 for this one. Robert Graham's definitely something you want to be on the lookout for as well. This next one is a Roar embroidered shirt size 2XL. Roar used to do really, really well for me. It's dropped off a little bit. It's, it still does well, but doesn't sell as quickly as it used to. Paid $7 and I sold for $35. Roar shirts are really, usually have a lot of intricate embroidery, uh, sometimes like slogans or like sayings on there, uh, roughed edges where it's distressed on purpose. So if you see something like that, the more intricate, the more gaudy, the more likely it is that somebody will want it. This next item is one of my favorite brands as well. This is Rain Spooner. If you've ever watched Arrested Development, you know the brand Rain Spooner. That's the shirts that Michael Sarah's character wear, that kind of muted Hawaiian. They do those and they also do a lot of theme shirts. This is one of those themed ones. This is from the University of Nebraska. So anybody who's a big Nebraska fan is going to want to wear this maybe to like a football game or something along those lines. This particular one, I picked it up for $6 and as you can see, sold for $70. Themed ones do really, really well, but even normal rain spooners, the, the muted Hawaiian, the nautical themed stuff, that's definitely still worth picking up as well, uh, as long as you comp it out properly. This next item is a pair of specialized bib shorts so these are used by cyclists if you can see there it's got a lot of padding on the butt so that when they're riding their bicycles that they don't get a sore butt <laughs> i don't know i'm not a cyclist really but i do know that it's something that a lot of people look for this is a size large paid six dollars and sold for fifty dollars cycling equipment in general does do pretty good for me cycling shoes these bibs the jerseys, those are all pretty good things to look out for as well. This next item is a pair of Under Armour American football cleats. These I picked up at a Ross on clearance for about $4. Ross clearance, Marshall's clearance, that kind of stuff. Definitely something you want to have on your radar as well. 
and I'll go over some of that stuff in future videos. Paid four dollars and sold for forty. So definitely still a lot of profit to be made off of these. Four dollars for a brand new pair of cleats. You almost can't lose on those. This next item is a Foo Fighters baseball tee style shirt from one of their Fenway Park concerts. As most of you know, their drummer, Taylor Hawkins, passed away not too long ago. And pretty much the next day after that news broke, somebody made me an offer for this. So I definitely, you know, I took it. It's hopefully it went to a good home. Concert tees are a really great item to be on the lookout for. Just band shirts, just as long as it's not mass produced, these are usually going to be really sought after because the fans of that band are going to want to wear those concert and band shirts. Paid $4 and sold for $40. This next item is a pair of New Balance Minimus model MT20, red and black. And these are running shoes. These are very, very light. So a lot of people really like that they're so light. It just helps them with the running, I guess. Paid $6 and they sold for $42. And the final item that I'll show you from my sold is this Melanie Martinez Cryberry is this Melanie Martinez Crybaby backpack. I'm actually really proud of giving this one a chance because obviously it's not mass produced. It's not an official piece of merchandise. It was somebody just airbrushing on a plain black backpack. But I knew who this singer was because my little sister-in-law happened to like her a while back. And I thought some fan of hers is really going to get a kick out of this. Picked it up for $4. You can see sold for $35. And that's going to bring me to my tip of the day, which is to, when you're outsourcing, try to get into the mindset of who's going to buy the piece that you're thinking of purchasing. So like that backpack. Obviously, a big fan of Melanie Martinez could pick it up. It could also be like, dad or mom picking it up for their kid or somebody wants to wear it to their con to a Melanie Martinez concert so that other fans can ooh and ah about it and kind of be amazed at its uniqueness. Uh, subject matter does matter but so does rarity. So if it was a if there was an official Melanie Martinez backpack that you could get at any Walmart or Target, Ross, whatever and they had to choose between that and this a lot of people would choose this one for the simple reason that it's more unique and people like to rep unique things. Price and name brand is another thing that you want to take into consideration when you're sourcing. So if you find a piece that retail is extremely expensive, like those Untuck It shirts, retail for about $90 brand new. So a lot of people won't want to pay $90 for a button down shirt when they can go on eBay and find a good used almost looking like new shirt for about 35. It just doesn't make sense to them. They don't care whether it's new or not. Uh, same thing with name brands. So more high-end luxury goods, a Versace purse, for example, maybe somebody wants a Versace purse, but they don't want to pay $500. They can go on eBay. They can find a good one, maybe last season and still, you know, have what they want. Being able to have something with that name brand, having the luxury status symbol, just things like that. Some, some people really think that that's important. And so they will go on eBay. They'll find a good, you know, Versace purse for a lot less than it would cost new. And they still get what they want out of it. Another reason some people buy things is for nostalgic reasons or maybe something with a timestamp on it. So a lot of my business is built on Nostalgia, a lot of the vintage business is built on nostalgia. So somebody wants, you know, uh, the cookie jar that their grandmother had on their counter for years. And it, it, having that would bring them joy. So they'll go online and they'll try to find that exact thing. It could be like a plush teddy bear that you had or maybe a plush teddy bear that your little kid has and carries it around and they lose it. And now they need a replacement. So they're going to go to places like eBay to try to find something that's important to them that kind of makes them, gives them the joy of having that piece back again. Uh, timestamps is more like the concert tees 
you know, a specific concert sometimes can hold a lot of sentimental value for somebody. So somebody had their very first concert and they went and they had the shirt and now it's lost or destroyed or old and they want to replace it so that they have that same memory with them. Uh, maybe it's even something like a concert that they wish they had been in but they weren't because they weren't even born yet or something, something like that is still a viable reason why people buy certain items. So those kinds of items, vintage stuff, stuff with a specific time reference on it, something like yearbooks, for example. You find an old yearbook on it, you have a very limited buyer base, but it is more likely that one person out of that graduating class is going to want that yearbook because they misplaced it, lost it, damaged, whatever the situation is. They're going to want that for nostalgia reasons. So keep an eye out for things that you think will trigger somebody's nostalgia reaction in their brain. As far as those concert teachers go, also keep in mind that they're very limited by nature. So they only made enough t-shirts for what they thought they could sell for that one concert or for that one tour. So there's not mass produced. There's not a, an excess of them out there. So the rarer something is, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to get good money for it. And one of the final reasons that uh, we'll be going over would be functionality and familiarity. So it's like those glasses. So maybe somebody's had the same glasses for 10 years and they just are the kind of person that hates change, wants the exact same thing they've always had. And so they're going to go out and they're going to look for it. That happens a lot too with discontinued items. So that's actually a really interesting psychological phenomenon where somebody gets really attached to like a brand of toothpaste or something like a specific razor that worked really well for them. Just people get attached to things for really weird reasons. And so when they discontinue something, they will go out and find whatever's left of that item and they're going to be willing to pay for it based on how rare and based on how scarce that item is. So if you find something that is discontinued, that's something that you're probably going to want to take a look at comps and see if it's worth picking up. I'm going to go over scarcity as far as discontinued items a little in the future on future videos. Okay, I'm going to switch gears a little bit here. And I, what I thought that I'd do is that on my shows, I would want to point you guys in the direction of somebody that helped me out in my reselling journey by teaching me something. And I can't think of a better one than the person who taught me the first niche that I learned after the one that I already knew, which was t-shirts. And that is Becky at the Dorky Thrifters. Now she hasn't really updated in a long time. All her videos are a little bit old, but the information on it is really, really good. If you wanna learn a new niche that is inexpensive, easy to store, and a very, very good return on investment, this is something that you may want to look into learning. Check out, check out our videos. You'll definitely learn something. You'll learn about certain brands of eyeglasses, sunglasses, how to clean, how to repair, just a lot of information. And so I wanted to give her a, a big shout out on my channel because she made me a lot of money. She taught me how to make a lot of money and she's not again she's not active anymore but i kind of see myself as taking over her mantle a little bit because i did absorb so much of that knowledge so in future videos i'm going to be making some glasses specific videos teaching you pretty much the same things with some additional information and maybe some modern comps so definitely give her a follow check out her videos and uh, learn something. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting to learn. I did also quickly want to address the name of my channel, which is The Liberal Thrifter. It's just uh, a mashup of two things that are important to me to kind of give you an idea of who I am as a person. So it's something that I just kind of thought went well together. With reselling, there's actually a big stigma, I think, that a lot of resellers are right-leaning because they're pulling themselves up by their bootstraps or whatever. But I just kind of want to give the other side of that coin, which is that there is a lot of people out there 
who have empathy and care about fellow people and are just trying to navigate late stage capitalism like the rest of us. So uh, also there's a lot of resellers that are disabled, that can't hold a regular job because of their disabilities, that know what it's like to be on a very limited income. And I think that's important to acknowledge because there's going to be a lot of people that fall under that umbrella. And so I, just to give you an idea of what my personal philosophy is, I'm just going to kind of share this with you real quick. I promise I'm not here to preach to you and I'm not going to be debating anybody's politics or anything like that because I just really think that's a huge waste of time. But this is what I believe in and it really boils down to this. Be cool. Don't be an asshole. That's it. It's really, really simple. It's a version of do unto others, but it's just something that is really important to me. All I'll say is that I think everybody should try to be a little bit better as a person every day and just try to grow as a person. So that's all I've got to say. I'm going to go ahead and leave the politics talk to the side for now. If you made it this far, I really, really want to thank you. It means a lot to me. And I do have some very big plans for this channel. I do plan to continue, hoping that it'll be every week, maybe every two, depends on how my schedule is. I am also want to let you know right off the bat that I am looking to get this channel monetized, but not for the reasons that you may be thinking. I actually have this idea or this vision that any money that comes from this channel, I would want to donate it to a worthy cause. So that's what I plan to do unless some unless by some miracle this blows up and then maybe I'll take a small piece, but I don't really think that's going to happen, but I do want to give back. So any money that is earned from this YouTube channel will be donated to a worthy cause. I'm talking, you know, Feeding America, Amnesty International, Planned Parenthood, uh, any number of causes that I think are going to be worthy. The magic number is 1000 subscribers. So, Please, please help me get to that point as quickly as possible by liking, subscribing, turning on notifications, commenting. I will respond to every single comment that I get, or I will try anyway. And yeah, help me get to that thousand subscribers as soon as we can so we can get those donations flowing. And as a special added bonus, I do want to announce to you guys that once we get to 250 subscribers, I actually will be sharing with all of you the best shipping hack for eBay resellers that you can that is out there. Now, this is not something that is very well known. It's not something that everybody has access to, but I have secured special from permission from the operators that handle it and I will be sharing it with you guys as soon as possible. As soon as we get to 250, I will make a standalone video that will help you guys save hundreds of dollars, hundreds if not thousands of dollars on shipping costs every year, especially if you do a lot of priority. And it will open up a lot of new categories that you may have stayed away from before because they were cost prohibitive to ship. So I'm really excited about that. I really think that's going to help a ton of resellers in the reseller community and uh yeah get me to that 250 please help me out and i will pay it forward to all of you so anyway again thank you so much for watching this has been an interesting experience i filmed this video maybe three or four times over i just wasn't happy with the quality now i think it's a little bit better and uh, yeah i can't wait to get this out there i can't wait to see what everybody thinks and so please can comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for being here and I will catch you on the next one. Be cool.